Hello! Um, I know it's been a while since I've done any voiceovers, or even speed paints for that matter. Well, uh, a few years almost, and the, 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 the first video I have ever done is has been unlisted since then because I really didn't like how I spoke there, but... Uh, well, I've decided to fight my anxiety and record my voice to do a commentary in my design process today. Uh, so today I'm taking my beloved baby boys and turning them into fish, because that's a normal thing to do. Well, maybe not really fish, more of a um, merman, tritons, just just mermaids but not maids. Yeah, <laughs> I'm doing it because of mermaid, of course. If you don't know what it is, then um, mermaid is an art challenge where you draw, well, mermaids uh, every day for the course of May. I'm, however, not good at participating in this kind of stuff, so I'll just draw my main five OCs as fish. So, actually, I'm just gonna mention that also, but I really wanted to avoid just making them, like, their regular design plus a fish tail instead of legs, because that's a bit lazy and I just don't like this type of mermaids anyways. I mean, if someone wanna do that, that's great and good for them and, like, you know, do what you want with your art, as long as it makes you happy, right? But I like to flex on my creature design skills, so, uh, you know, uh, I wanted good, cohesive water creatures rather than fairy tale characters, basically. And because of that, I decided to make each one of them a specific fish. So first of the bunch is Shilly. I guess a lot of you may uh, recognize Shilly, uh, so a bit in though. Um, Shilly, in her original design, is a member of my original species called Phoenixes. Essentially, they are those avian people that also have fire powers. For that design, I dropped the fire gimmick completely, uh, as fire and water don't really go together well, uh, I, I suppose. But I did keep the bird theme, and for her fish, I picked the flying fish. You know, bird, flying, that, that kinda goes together. Um, so this fish, as the name suggests, can fly, sort of. It can jump out of the water and glide with, uh, with the wind. And once they reach the water, uh, they can skip on top of it the, with their tails and have those kind of elongated lower fins, which is like really cool if you ask me. So here we have Shilly as this fish. I kept her original silhouette, of course, so she's buff as hell with tiny waist. And I think that actually corresponds so well into a mermaid design. I love how her waist just tempers down into a tail. It looks oddly natural and makes her look very triangular. Uh, unfortunately, for that reason, we lose her iconic boots. But but that was bound to happen with those designs, you know? Since this was the first one of the bunch, I had a few choices to make that would impact the rest, since I wanted those designs to fit with each other and like make sense together. So for example, when drawing her boobs, I was actually wondering if I want to draw the nips or not, and honestly, if it wasn't for YouTube, I would probably draw the nips, <laughs> but I didn't, so now neither of them have nips. Very important detail, of course. Uh, I mean, I guess it makes more sense that way, because, like, fish don't have nipples, I suppose. But another part that is way more normal was the hair. I had to make a tough choice. Do I want to keep the hair normally as it is in the original, or do I want to turn them into, like, uh, fins or something? As you probably already see, I kept the hair. <laughs> Could it be more interesting with hair things? Probably, maybe, I don't know. But I realized it would be a bit hard to replicate all of their hairstyles as fins, and I'm not sure how how they would translate to fins. Uh, besides, mermaids usually have hair anyways. Yes, I know what I said about classic mermaids before, just let me be a hypocrite, alright? I decided to exchange her bird wings with those um, fin wings that flying fish have and place them on her back. I also exchanged her regular ears with a pair of the same fins. Uh, at first I drew those classic mermaid ears that look like typical sea creatures, but I really wanted to actually make her design correspond as closely to the original, while also being as close to the fish. Also my absolute favorite detail is that instead of her regular scrunchie, I gave her a fucking sponge to hold her hair, and I think that I'm genius for that, you can praise me now. You probably didn't even notice. <laughs> With coloring, it wasn't very hard, which is surprising coming from my mouth, as I struggle with coloring a lot. I wasn't really strict with the color palette, as flying fish are white and gray, that's boring. So I picked a color that would fit the general design, uh, like sea green or whatever you want to call that. 
Uh, I wanted to keep the pattern, however, so I made her back be a bit darker and her belly lighter. Of course, lots of golden accessories, because that's just silly, I have to. I gave her her usual two bracelets and added one on her tail, just because. And also those chains on her hips with a pearl. I have no idea why I put the pearl there, but just, I, I felt like it, okay? It's ocean, fish, water and all that, so... For that same reason, I changed her glove to seaweeds, because water. I also tried to incorporate the red tail I saw lots of this fish having. And uh, it actually stayed for a bit, but man, Shilly and Red just, just don't go together. So I changed it after I stopped recording. But what I changed it for is like a little bit creative, I think. So, as I said, flying fish jump out of the water and once they land, they glide on top of it with their tails. So I thought, if Shilly was a mermaid and we assume that there are other flying fish people out there, then they would probably uh, have some tools to move around better. Like, humans have shoes to walk better, so they would have something to glide better. And so I gave her this um armor on her tail and of course I made it gold and have some cool spikes because Shilly. Yeah, so we can move on now. So next is Marcel. Since Shilly was kinda my warm up, the next one was pretty straightforward. I actually finished this one like 30 minutes faster than the previous one and I don't really know why, since I feel like I fiddled with this one just as much as with the previous. So quick introduction to Marcel himself. He's a ninja cat boy and he's very fancy and very pretty, mwah mwah. So, um, now that I said cat boy, you can probably guess my first idea for him was a catfish, of course. And while I adore catfishes, catfish? Catfishes? I I'm not sure. Well, th this fish. Um, and if someone asked me about my, like, favorite fish, I would probably say catfish. I felt like they are way too goofy for such a posh bitch Marcel is. Not only that, but also they are just grey. Nothing interesting going on besides the whiskers, just grey silly blob. That's why I have decided to pick a fish that just screams with aesthetic and elegance. And what other fish could it be other than koi fish? Not only they are depicted in many very posh looking artworks, they look very distinguished in general usually. But also they are Asian in origin, and uh, at least I think so. <laughs> and uh, Marcel, while not being Asian, is one of those folks who love oriental aesthetics in general, so I'm pretty sure his favorite fish would be koi fish. He's a cat though, so I suppose he likes fish in general? But that's besides the point. Also, koi fish do have whiskers, and while those whiskers are not as big as catfishes have, they are there. And so I don't get to skip my super amazing idea of replacing his um, sideburn cheek fluff with said whiskers. So next, same as with Shilly, to keep his uh, shapes on point, I made his fish half very round and plump. Honestly, I like it a lot. He looks so squishy. I love that. I also added some pearls. There wasn't much idea behind it or than the fact he needed some accessories, so I just picked something he would most likely wear, and also because he's a fish, so pearls, because, you know, water, ocean, stuff. So now about the colors, they gave me a bit of a hard time. So koi fish are generally white, black and orange, and while I was set on making him white, the orange bit was, um, kinda problematic. My characters are color-coded, and if you don't know what that means, um, basically it's that they have a color they are roughly represented by, or have a specific range of colors that they are allowed to be uh, used on them, besides their already established color palette, of course. So for Marcel, his colors are anything bluish, and then cold browns and light yellows. Um, as you can see, very hard vibrated orange um, wouldn't suit here very much, so I had to improvise. Finds out, blue koi fish do exist, which was a relief, so after some fiddling I went with that. I also didn't use direct black, but rather nice dark blue, looking very navy. 
I have also decided to add a dark spot on his hand that was supposed to imitate his glove he sometimes wears in the original design and god damn it, not only did I color the wrong finger, I also did it on a completely wrong hand. I don't know how it happened, probably because his arms were crossed and I misinterpreted his left hand for his right, but don't worry, I fixed that in the final artwork, no biggie, it's fine. Also I changed the pearls to be more colorful since it looked nicer, that's all, next! Next is Evo. Uh, for him I had a clear idea for a type of fish right away. A shark. Grey reef shark, to be exact. Why, um, if Evo was an animal, he would be a wolf. And if I had to pick an equally metal water equivalent of a wolf, it would be a shark. Is it a stretch? Maybe. But shark it is. Besides, sharks are so edgy and rebel, I bet Evo would be a fan. <laughs> I'll say it right away that this one gave me trouble. It was an hour of struggling. I don't know why, but Ido is usually the hardest to draw for me, especially his face. Here the footage of me struggling with the face uh, was cut out because it was extremely obnoxious to watch, but believe me that it took me almost 10 to maybe even 20 minutes to get it right. For some reason I have trouble drawing his face as anything else than like mildly annoyed and bored. So yeah, and in general this one was... Uh... The torso wasn't anything innovative. Evo has a pretty average build for a 30 year old man, but I did give him a slightly longer tail than the other two had. It was pretty intuitive though, mostly to keep him symmetrical, like vertically. Um, I gave him those semi fins on his elbows and made his fingers sharp, kinda like claws, because that just gave me a shark vibe. So while drawing all the fins, I also made a mistake. So I misinterpreted the references I got and gave him two of those little fins on the tail when there was only supposed to be one. I fixed that later, like with everything else I did wrong in the previous ones. <laughs> I also wanted to give him a back fin, but I wasn't sure whether to put it on the back of his head to replace his horns or to put it on the back. So I did both, so now he has two back fins. Does it make sense? Probably not. Will it upset some people? Probably yes. Do I care? No, he looks cool. <laughs> With colors it was pretty easy, just grey and white, like the shark, since it's quite fitted Evo. He's a very greyish type of man, I think. <laughs> also I added some dark tips uh, on the fins, uh, because I noticed some sharks have that and he seriously needed something more going on besides just grey. Thankfully his bright red hair kinda made it all pop a bit more. Uh, later I added his body hair also, but I'm not sure if it was recorded or not, but it kinda made his chest more interesting, thankfully. When it comes to accessories, I mostly just referenced his original look. So leather bracelets on his hands and also his tail, and silver chains. In the original he has a piece of chain attached to his belt, so I played on that and added this thingy where he has like pierced fins and a chain attached to them and like that's pretty metal, pretty punk, very much Evo. So yeah, that's about it. I don't have much to talk about since it was very straightforward to draw, so for the remaining time I want to mention a little thing for some of you drawing folks that may be watching this. As I mentioned before, this one was a struggle. Not only the face, a huge chunk of the speed paint was cut out because I tried a lot of things to make it better and there was no point keeping all of those things that didn't make it to the final version. But despite all my attempts and things I had to fix, it doesn't look the way I wanted. And you know what? That's okay. I could just redraw the whole piece from scratch, but there was no point, I believe. It doesn't look bad enough, I am ashamed to show it or something. It's not my best, but well, they can't all be winners, right? Sometimes the drawing just doesn't work out perfectly, but as my graphic designer teacher used to say, finished artwork, even if not the best, is always better than artwork that was never finished. On the other hand, there are days where I try to work, but the whole universe just says nope, and those are the days where it's better to just give up and go do something, you know, I enjoy, or you enjoy for that matter. You can come back to it later, you know, trust me. Just don't throw it away because it doesn't look perfect or today is not the day to do it, right? <laughs> so yeah, that's that. W well, um, it keeps going, you guys. I don't know, just uh, enjoy the rest with some music, I suppose.
So uh, that's him. Next. Next we have Yajana. Yes, that, that's how you pronounce that name for those who wondered. I know it's, it looks clunky. For him, I wasn't really sure what I wanted him to be, like what kind of fish, I mean. Nothing really sparked in my brain right away. At first I thought since he's like a vampire, maybe there are some fish like that, and uh, Google showed me a payara, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, which is often referred to as a vampire fish. And while it looks really cool, its focal point is definitely the mouth, that's probably where the name comes from. But the mouth won't be visible because, you know, I'm drawing a mermaid, so the top half is like humanoid, so I dropped that. So my next idea was to maybe go to the rat territory. Uh, Yajuna's spirit animal is a rat, I guess, and he has a pet rat too, so I mean it made sense. He, he looks like a rat, you know, like a sewer rat. I typed in ratfish and... Oh god, I found the best fucking fish in the world. Like, look at it, look at its face, it's so funny, I love him so much, he's so funky. However, in the end, I decided to not go with it for the most random reason. So Yajna has a little lightning hair strand, a hoge or whatever, on top of his hair. And he's an engineer or like a scientist or whatever you want to call him. He makes robots and guns and stuff. And, you know, that all goes along with electricity, so, um, I went basic, an electric eel. <laughs> it's way more basic than, like, a ratfish or a payara, sure, but maybe that's a good thing, you know? It's easier to recognize and all that. So I really wanted to push the idea of him being, like, a usual sewer gremlin that he is, but, like, an eel, making him, like, all nervous and fidgety and weirdo-looking. That's kind of his vibe, you know, he do be silly like that. I was really surprised how well his posture and hair resonated with the electric eel. Like, I knew I picked the right fish when I saw how it's coming along, you know, it looked great. <laughs> I struggled a bit with his left hand. I couldn't really get the pose right and had to resort to awkwardly staring at my own hand, but like, it didn't help and honestly, uh, it kind of made things worse. Uh, so I ended up just doing it by eye and it worked better. But other than that, drawing this one went pretty smoothly. Just as with the others, I exchanged his uh, vampire elongated ears for fins. This time, however, they were placed where like regular ears should be and not like animal ears. Um, and I colored him dark purple to contrast with the hair, plus it also added to the sickly look. I noticed a lot of eels also have some kind of spots or dots along their body and that's honestly perfect because that meant I could replicate the patches that he has on his skin originally, also adding them all down the tail. My favorite part of this one however was the electric sparks I did around the, his bottom half. It really sold the idea of an electric eel being well like electric and not just any eel. It also gave something interesting to look at, more details and such, especially since I didn't add any accessories to him, because Yajne is not really into anything that could jangle or move around on him. He's very easily overstimulated, which to be honest also really fits with, with this like fidgety electric eel aesthetic, so it all went along. Well, that's him, so now on to the last one. And so, the last but not least, Sizer. I definitely knew I don't want to make him just like a regular fish, simply because from all the characters he stands out the most, I think. I mean, he's a huge antral lizard casually standing next to clearly humanoid people, so I suppose he does stand out. I was kinda unsure whether I want to pick some mythical uh, creature like a sea serpent or something, but since everyone else were real fish, I came back to more realistic animals. Then I thought about using something like a leafy sea dragon or the sea dragon slug, because they are pretty interesting and very pretty, but ultimately I put my choice on a seahorse. Uh, they are pretty similar to sea dragons and have a very recognizable and very interesting shape to their tails. Besides, thanks to that I get to play with his colors a bit. Caesar has a very um, bland color palette without his clothes. Speaking of clothes, his hat. I had no idea what the fuck to do with his hat. It wouldn't work to just put it there as it is, as previously with other guys I replaced any regular clothes with something water related. And I couldn't just not draw it, because this beanie is kinda crucial part of his design. He never takes it off and that's kinda his gimmick. 
but I got a very stupid, very silly idea to replace his hat with a sea anemone. I know that technically it is a living animal, but to be honest that just makes it even more absurd. Like, in this mermaid AU, I suppose, it's more like a pet than a hat, you know? I imagine that it just attached to Scizor like it normally does to Coral, and now he has to feed it and stuff. Like, it's, it's cute, I guess. So that's his pet hat! <laughs> Honestly, that makes me regret that I didn't add Yajanes rat to his picture. He could be like some silly water creature or something. But I'm not going back to previous ones, okay? Speaking of going back, Caesar was the only one I completed first and then actually came back to fix all of his colors. To be honest, I'm glad it happened to the last one I was drawing and not somewhere in the middle, because I would probably be too discouraged to continue the whole thing. It's not like the colors were bad color palette wise, but I actually went a bit ham on the rendering and while it looked really nice, it didn't fit with the rest since they were all very not blended in terms of color, if you get what I'm saying. So I remade the whole thing to be more fitting with the exact same colors, just slightly more blocky to fit in with the rest of the gang and uh, I think it came out pretty solid. So um, here is Sizer with his animal pet. So that's them, that's my boys! Uh, here are all of them on one picture so you can look at them and stuff, I, I don't know. Hope it was interesting to watch and like generally thanks for watching so much and like thanks for watching it all the way through. It was my first time trying to do something more complex with a video editing program and also record my voice on top of that. It was stressful, very, very much stressful. But also I like to talk about what I'm doing and my ideas and my process and stuff. So if you liked the video and actually want to learn more about my babies, my toy house with all my character bios is accessible through my card that is linked in the description. And if you want to hear me talk about my OCs on the video, then um, let me know, I guess. If you feel like it, of course, no pressure. So um, thanks for watching one more time. And I don't have anything else to promote, I suppose. I don't know. Uh, visit my Twitter. I'm very active on there, like way more than I am on YouTube, because like animation takes a lot of time and drawing singular images does not take that much time. So, um, see ya, maybe, I hope. <laughs>